your soulmate like garbage in the middle of the woods, didn't you, sir? No, ma'am. Just like your phone said you did. And then you drove back down for beaded car with a missing bumper and the missing wheel well, and you dumped her car just like you dumped her at the corner of Bell and Montrose, didn't you, sir? No, ma'am. This is the story of Anitra Lachey Gunn, aged 23, who was strangled to death on Valentine's Day by her toxic boyfriend, Demarcus Little, age 23. Demarcus could not handle her wanting to move on with someone else and also not wanting him anymore after manipulating her in various ways. He told her how much he loved her on Valentine's Day and she laughed back at his comments, making him upset, strangling her and dumping her in the woods on Valentine's Day. Hello and welcome to Twisted Crimes. Subscribe and hit the like button for more stories. Investigators believe a Fort Valley State student died at the hands of her boyfriend. This story will be taking us to the city of Fort Valley, Georgia. Fort Valley is a town in Georgia with a population of 8,829. Fort Valley is in Peach County. Living in Fort Valley offers residents a sparse suburban feel and most residents rent their homes. Anitra Gunn, aged 23, was a student at the Fort Valley State University. Anitra had graduated from the Westlake High School in Atlanta. She was known to be someone lively, funny, sweet, and family-oriented. She regularly post pictures of her mother and dad on her social media even though her mother passed away sometimes around 2014. On Father's Day she sent her dad a very lovely message. Anitra would meet a young man named Demarcus Little an army sergeant at Fort Gordon. He by no means was a cool-headed guy because the relationship had been toxic since day one. She was going through all sort of times with him even though he called her his soul mate. There were numerous times she tried to break up with him but he won't let her go, there was a time where he slashed her tires and also threw rocks into the windows of her car, calling her over 50 times in the space of 24 hours and planning to pay someone $200 to have her new boyfriend killed or beat up. A day before Valentine's Day on February 13, Demarcus and his best friend Javion Abron all went to a party together around 11 p.m. When he arrived at the party, Anitra was there. At the end of the whole event, they all left in the same car. Javion drove the car to Anitra's house on Church Street in Fort Valley and dropped the couple off there but the night didn't end there for the couple. Somehow they ended in Demarcus's aunt's house. After they got to the house, he confronted her telling her how she hasn't been committed to him during the troubling times and how he really loved her. Anitra found that comment funny and laughed it off. That got Demarcus really upset which made him grab her and strangle her right there until she stopped breathing. When she died, he would use her phone to text himself and text some of her friends. He then put her in the back of her car then drove her into the woods to hide her body under the bushes. He drove recklessly to the extent he damaged the car and the front bumper came off the car. Getting back to his aunt's house, he panicked and decided to go get the bumper, he called his best friend Javion to accompany him to the woods, on their way he explained all that happened regarding how he killed her because she laughed at him when he said he really loved her. Anitra's dad sent her a text between 1am and 2am. Happy Valentine's Day. I love you. When you get this message, call me. At 8.11 a.m. she responded, Happy Valentine's Day. I love you too dad, and added that she was going out of town with a new guy she had met. Her dad questioned it. Sharing just a few more messages, her dad didn't hear from his daughter again. That same day he contacted the Fort Valley Police Department after Anitra's brother, Antoine, couldn't get into contact with her, and phone calls from her father went unanswered. She was declared missing and there was a search for her. Crime Stoppers announced a $5,000 reward for information leading to Anitra's location. Search continues for a missing Fort Valley State student Anitra Gunn, and now authorities are offering a reward for information on where she might be. Crime Stoppers head Warren Shelby says the Peach County Sheriff and Byron and Fort Valley Police are offering that $5,000 reward, and they are looking for clues on what happened to the student. Also, a key piece of evidence in the case, our Zach Merchant is now live at the scene where search teams were searching just yesterday. Good afternoon, Zach. Yeah, Aaron, this road is where a relative of Anitra Gunn's boyfriend lives. It is, as you can see, pretty quiet right now, but yesterday it was crawling with first responder search parties. We're going to pop some video up on your screen right now so you can see what it looked like yesterday. Even though the search no longer going on at this location at the moment, 
Law enforcement still working to dig up new leads and clear up some discrepancies on some old information. Many of you pointed out a discrepancy in the timeline of this case provided by law enforcement yesterday. Some sources said Anitra was last seen Thursday night. Others said it was Friday morning. Today, GBI Special Agent in Charge JT Rickardson said the task force searching for Anitra is trying to clear up exactly that discrepancy. And he says one piece of evidence could be a key to unlocking the case. Anitra's car was found over the weekend, but its front bumper was missing. Peach County Sheriff Terry Deese says finding that bumper is essential. Hey, we think that bumper is very important. Right now, everybody's a suspect. You know, we want to find this young lady. You know, in cases like this, we're not going to leave any rocks uncovered. DeMarcus was trying to throw the police off. He sent a text to her dad demanding a ransom of $8,000 and also instructed not to contact the police. Her body would be found the next day in the woods by an officer. And a tragic end in the search for a missing college student last seen on Valentine's Day. Police believe they may have found the body of Anitra Gunn. Mara Sirianni live outside GBI headquarters for us this morning. And Mara, Anitra's boyfriend has been arrested in connection with this case? Yeah, he has. So right now, Gunn's boyfriend, Demarcus Little, is being labeled as a person of interest in this case. Now, I want to get you right to his mugshot because the 22-year-old was taken into custody not too long after that body was located and charged with criminal damage to property. That's after detectives say he broke windows at Gunn's apartment and slashed her tires back on February 5th. Investigators found the body believed to be that of Anitra Gunn Tuesday afternoon near the Peach Crawford County line. Weather conditions, they say, making the search rather difficult. Peach County Sheriff Terry D says the body was found partially covered, quote, as if someone tried to hide it. I think it's pretty common sense who our person of interest is. Can you say it and though out loud? Um, it's the boyfriend. Uh, we've talked to him three times. DeMarcus was arrested and his friend was arrested too for lying to the police when they were both earlier interrogated. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. A friend of DeMarcus Little now charged with helping hide the death of Anitra Gunn and lying to investigators. Ensley Nichols went to a news conference this afternoon in Fort Valley. Ensley, can you tell us about today's arrest? Well, Frank, almost a week ago, DeMarcus Little was arrested for malice murder. A warrant later revealed Anitra Gunn was strangled. Now the GBI made a second arrest in relation to Gunn's murder case, and they say more could follow. Press conference Wednesday afternoon, GBI Assistant Special Agent Todd Crosby announced a second arrest in the Anitra Gunn murder investigation. Through that continued investigative act in review of evidence, enough probable cause has been established to, tar to charge Javon Abram. Crosby says the 21-year-old was charged with two counts of false statements in Valdosta, Georgia, and one count of concealing a death in Peach County. Investigators say Abron is friends with Demarcus Little. Little was charged with the murder of Anitra Gunn, his girlfriend, sometime on Valentine's Day. During an investigation, we don't, we're not going to leave any stone unturned. Investigators recovered Gunn's cell phone, but the front bumper to her car is still missing. After carefully thinking about his future, his best friend Javian would later confess and be a state witness regarding what DeMarcus did to Anitra. He, he just started, he was like, man, you know, I was talking to me, bro, and I, I was pouring my heart out to him, but I was talking to him, and he was like, um, trying to tell how I feel about it, and how, you know, how, how much I love him and stuff. And he was like, um, she ended up laughing in my face. He was like, Brian, I don't know what happened. I just blacked out. And I, and I hit him. And he was like, <laughs> when he was like, after that, like, he just grabbed him and started choking him. And he was like, when, when, um, while like he was choking her at first, she was trying to fight back or whatever. But then he was like, at a point in time, she just stopped fighting. So he felt like she she had wanted to be home with her. She wanted to go with her mom. So he did he tell you what he did with Anitra's body? Yes, ma'am. What did he tell you? He had told that he had that home. He had told me that he had um took her to 
and dumped her in the woods. And that's what we would like you about. I, you know, you were telling me, like, yeah, I had to get rid of her. And you were like, but I gotta go get this bumper. And that's what we was pulling in the wood. And that's what I about shit on myself. DeMarcus would have his day in court too. He chose to testify and this were some of the things he had to say. Mr. Little, I have uh, a number of questions for you. I'm going to try and see if I can understand as the evidence that's been put in, if you can help me understand how it says one thing and you're saying something else, okay? All right. Now, first I want to talk about yours and Anitra's relationship. That was your soulmate? Now, to your soulmate, you slashed your soulmate's tires. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You broke your soulmate's window. Yes, ma'am. All right. You threatened to shoot up a man that your soulmate was going out with. Yes, ma'am. You uh, told her that you were committing suicide and it was her fault, correct? Yes, ma'am. You saw the text message where she said that you were outside her house and you wouldn't leave. You did that on repeated occasions, correct? Yes, ma'am. You showed up at her house uninvited, correct? Yes, ma'am. She repeatedly told you, stop coming back, didn't she? Yes, ma'am. She told you that your relationship was toxic and that you couldn't be together, correct? Yes, ma'am. And every time you talked her back in to the two of you being together, didn't you? No, Isn't it just like your phone says that at four you went back to 420, you told Javon, go on, Sierra's gonna come get me, and you got back in Anitra's car and you drove it over ditches and trees, causing the bumper to fall off, causing everything else to break apart, and you dumped your soulmate like garbage in the middle of the woods, didn't you, sir? No, ma'am. Just like your phone said you did. And then you drove back down her beaded car with the missing bumper and the missing wheel well, and you dumped her car just like you dumped her at the corner of Bell and Montrose, didn't you, sir? No, ma'am. Just like your phone said you did. No, ma'am. So your phone is lying. The jurors were shown text between DeMarcus and Anitra. November 1st, 2019 at 12.28, 19 a.m. I think we should stop talking to each other altogether. That's the only way you'll be able to process what's actually going on. And I won't keep changing my mind just to accommodate to your feelings. Gunn added, love you forever, and called Little the quote, love of my life. Hours later, Little responded saying he planned to take his life. I swear I don't want you to feel responsible, Mitra. I was broken before you ever came along, and now it's nothing left. Little responded saying the gun quote broke him down and that she would quote need to deal with the consequences. Just five days later, Little and Gunn were texting again. This time, Demarcus questioning Anitra's relationship with another man. 952, Demarcus Little, like bro, we've been to have some serious problems if you go out with him. Little even sends a screenshot of a text message to her. It shows Little offering someone two hundred dollars to harm the man he believes had a relationship with Gunn. Then in January 2020, text messages reveal Gunn's distress over her relationship with Little. You just came in my house last night without open invitation, touched me several times after me repeatedly asking you not to, forcefully took my keys away from me, but when I retaliated, I was the bad guy. After several days at trial, the jury eventually found him guilty. And I'll ask the defendant to stand to receive the verdict. The verdict is count one, malice murder, read the jury find DeMarcus Devante Little not guilty. For count two, felony murder, read the jury find DeMarcus Devante Little guilty. Count three, aggravated assault, read the jury find DeMarcus Devante Little guilty. He was sentenced to life in prison. Justice for her family has arrived. The family now has closure, but are left with only the memories of Anitra. 
and this is just sad for both of the families sending prayers. This is how you're reacting online after a jury handed down a verdict in the murder trial of the 2020 death of Fort Valley State University student Anitra Gunn. The man accused of strangling and killing Gunn on Valentine's Day back in 2020, now convicted and sentenced. Jurors found DeMarcus Little guilty of murder in connection with the death of his former girlfriend. Our Ashlyn Webb takes you inside the emotional day in court and details what led up to the jury's decision. After seven long days of testimony and three hours of deliberation, the jury reached a verdict, finding DeMarcus Little guilty of aggravated assault and felony murder and not guilty of malice murder. Among cries of relief from Anitra Gunn's family, DeMarcus Little was put in handcuffs and escorted out. Judge Connie Williford sentenced Little to the maximum penalty, life without the possibility of parole. The sentence Anitra Gunn's family asked the court for Tuesday. Her godmother, sister, and cousin all stood before the judge, saying Little stole the life Anitra Gunn was just beginning and the memories her family could have made with her. There will be no more birthday parties, holiday celebrations, or family activities to share. The verdict comes after seven long days of testimony, hearing from key witnesses, including Gunn's best friend, Little's aunt, and Little's best friend, Javon Abron, who told investigators that DeMarcus Little confessed he murdered Anitra Gunn in February 2020. Now the prosecution says Little's own phone was the biggest witness against him. Investigators used GPS locations from his phone on Valentine's Day 2020. Little claimed all those locations were correct, except when his phone was tracked to the woods off of Greer Road where investigators found Gunn's body. During the father's testimony, he shared that Anitra would have been graduating in the spring of 2020. She had recently been accepted to a music school in Arizona. Valentine's Day was supposed to be a day where we express love to our loved ones, but unfortunately, that would end up being the day which Anitra was killed. Our sincere condolences to the friends and families of Anitra Gunn. May Anitra's memory be a blessing for her family and for all who knew her and may her life and death be an inspiration and a turning point towards justice and increased protection for domestic abuse survivors.